um, up to 999 degrees and set it where I want so that it will maintain that same that temperature in the vaporizer at all times. So this is going to be connected in line with my exhaust going to the vaporizer. Um, so I guess I could put it like that. And that's going to shut off exhaust going to the vaporizer um, or open up and let the uh, exhaust in. Um, right before this this uh, solenoid valve I am going to be placing a T that's going to connect to the outlet portion of the vaporizer um, and the reason I'm doing that is so that I, re I can reroute the exhaust when I don't want it coming into the container um, so that it can obviously leave the engine otherwise my car would die um, so, let's see, is there anything else on here that I forgot? Yeah, all these brass fittings. These brass fittings um, are for my fuel line in my car. What I'm using those for is on my uh, on my on my Jeep, and actually on pretty much any fuel injected car nowadays. You have a gas inlet coming from your gas tank and then you have a gas outlet going back to your gas tank and the reason for this is it allows your gas to circulate through um, preventing vapor lock so you guys that have problems with vapor lock if you guys were to make a, uh, a system that would allow your fuel to circulate you would not probably not have much of a problem with vapor lock because it pushes that vapor back into the gas tank instead instead of allowing it to build up in the fuel lines um, and back up to the uh, fuel pump and then prevent it from pumping um, a liquid because it's full of vapor. So that's what that's for. I'm basically going to be making an H connection. Um, I'll have a cross T and a regular T. I know I have three T's right here, but two of these I actually uh, I have another part that I'm have on order right now, and it's a T and a cross instead of just two T's connected together. At the time, the the place that I got these from, they didn't have the cross T. So. I'm going to connect them together um, to basically make an H pipe. You guys know what that is. Um, and then I'm going to have the valves, these valves right here. There's three of them. One's to shut off the uh, gas coming from my fuel tank. One's, okay, to turn on or shut off the gas going to my fuel tank. One's to turn on or turn off the gas going to the vaporizer. And one's to turn on or turn off the gas um, that for the line that recirculates the fuel back into the gas tank and I want three of them so that I can shut everything off so that there's no questions whatsoever that fuel is going to my vehicle as normal um, when the vaporizer is running I'm also going to be disconnecting my fuel injectors wires so that there's no way that my injectors could be working um, so alright and then the next thing on the list um, I guess I can get a close uh, picture, a little bit closer up of the, all this stuff, so you guys can pause the video and see exactly what I have. I lined all these up. If they're in a row, that means they're all the same. So, there's a coupler, there's my T's, there's my 5 sixteenths. Sorry, those are my nipple, the nipples. <laughs> um, and this, these right here are the compression fittings. Um, that are going to connect. Uh, oh, I'm waiting on a piece of some stainless steel tubing, quarter-inch stainless steel tubing, because I'm going to be wrapping that tubing around my exhaust line, so that I can preheat the fuel going to the vaporizer, so that it doesn't require as much heat to heat up that fuel once it um, before it enters the vaporizer. So, um, I have the um, the compression fittings. It's a compression to a pipe thread. All the rest of these are pipe thread fittings, and then this is a compression to pipe thread elbow. Um, and then I have my my five sixteenths barbed fitting. It's five sixteenths to quarter inch um, male pipe thread. That's what those are. And then I have my um, my quarter inch valves right here. So this right here is a high heat paint. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the whole container in this high heat paint. This paint. Um, 
can withstand temperatures of up to 2,000 degrees. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, 1,300 to 2,000 degrees. So, last but not least are some of the test apparatuses that I have here. All right. These are very important. I have a better heat gun, but... Um, it's just an example. Okay, this right here. Bam! That's my exhaust gas analyzer. What that's going to do is connect up to the exhaust um, outlet on my car. And it measures the amount of carbon coming off the exhaust and tells you whether your vehicle is running rich or whether it's running lean or just right. So, just so you guys know, because uh, I've had a lot of questions about this. My car should be showing that it's running lean with this system. It should actually, I'm trying to get it as lean as I possibly can. I even want that gauge completely, or the numbers completely bottomed out so that it has next to no carbon at all in the exhaust. Some of you are going to say, well, your car's going to be running lean. It's going to, it's going to burn, your car's going to be running hotter. Um, that's not necessarily true because the reason that it is running lean is because the fuel is burning completely all of the fuel is burning the problem that you have with gas liquid gas being injected into your engine or running through a carburetor is the uh, it's not a vapor and only vapor burns so any va if there's any liquid gasoline that is left after the combustion process it exits your exhaust and passes through your catalytic converter and uh, is which is at about I believe 800 degrees or so and is then um, basically burned up even more um, to, to make emissions lower so and that right there catalytic converters themselves prove that the fuel is not consumed completely and it's definitely not um, the tests that I've done before where I got the 200 plus miles per gallon that right there shows that your uh, car when it's running on a liquid gas being sprayed into your engine is very inefficient because it's it's not all burned um, so by making the gas into a vapor state before it reaches your engine that allows it to burn completely so basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my vehicle down to do a dyno test um, zoom in on this a little bit and while I'm having that dyno test run I'm gonna have the dyno test done um, with my car run running as normal so without the vaporizer connected or with it being bypassed um, and then I'll have another test done with the, vapor the vaporizer connected um, that way I have completely accurate results and my what 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 I am um, my goal is is to have my car on the dyno running on the vapor system have this um, exhaust gas analyzer connected and have it running uh, or showing extremely low that I'm running extremely extremely lean um, and when that does happen when I have it on the dyno and my car is running extremely extremely lean that proves that the vapor is being burned completely bec um, or the gas is being burned completely because it is in the state of a vapor and my uh, basically um, my engine power will be maintained at the same levels as it was with the, the liquid gasoline being sprayed but yet it's showing lean because it's being consumed all the way. Sorry if that didn't make very much sense. I'm extremely tired. I haven't got much sleep. Um, but let me get a more of a close-up on this so you guys can kind of see exactly what the make is and all that. Hope I'm being stable enough. But... Alright that's it so I have this heat gun here so that I can um, check the heat of the exhaust 
when it's coming out of my exhaust pipe so that I know how hot it is. Um, the uh, thermostat that I'm going to have connected to this solenoid valve uh, um, will have a thermal couple connected to it so that it tells me what the temperature is in my container. Um, and I'll be able to have pretty accurate readings from that but I'm also going to test the actual exhaust itself after the, pro the whole process is done to see exactly what it's reading so um, that's about all I have to share right now let me get this camera and turn it around alright guys this is Tyson with HHO for Life FSRD Fuel Systems Research and Development. Um, I hope that this was a good video and was pretty informative to help you guys know exactly what I'm doing or somewhat what I'm doing. Um, I am going to be making follow-up videos. I'm going to be recording all of the uh, building on video. I'm not going to, I guess I shouldn't say all of it because I'm not going to record it being welded together and all that, but I will do the step-by-step. -step. Here's what it is before it's welded and cut out. Um, and then here's what it looks like afterwards and I'll go through the different steps like that so that you guys can see the whole process and not have any questions as to how you would connect it and build it um, <clears throat> so it's gonna be awesome guys looking forward to it and I want to give a major shout out major thanks to Steve you're the man you know who you are um, thanks for all the support thanks for the funding to make this possible it's a greatly appreciated and we're going to do marvelous things. And it's not going to be suppressed this time like a lot of the other designs have. Everybody's heard of these um, cars that get amazing mileage, but yet none of them have been out on market, onto the market. Part of that's because of the government not wanting it, the oil industry's not wanting it, um, because think about it. Think about how much less oil is going to be consumed if, the, if something like this were to come out. How many jobs would be lost and stuff like that. Well, what I got to say about the jobs being lost is think about how many more jobs can be created. Think about how much we'll be saving gas. Truckers, truckers will be saving gas. Um, all kinds of places will be saving so much money that more jobs will be able to be created. So it will equal itself out in the end um, for those of you that, that think it won't. It definitely will. This is something that needs to get out to the people and it will. I'm not allowing this to be suppressed. I'm open sourcing this information so that everybody can benefit from it. Not just me. I'm so sick and tired of people suppressing their information when it comes to things like this. It's not happening anymore, guys. Um, I'm doing this and working on it until the end until we do have those successful results that people in the past have had. Um, I'll also be... I'll also be... Uh, experimenting with water and stuff like that mixed in with the fuel um, because my ultimate goal is obviously to be able to run 100 percent water or our hydrogen um, hydrogen oxygen mix but right now what i'm shooting for is to run on about 80 percent water and 20 percent gasoline vapors um, so just give you a little rundown of this one more time All right. No more suppression, guys. Uh, we'll get this done. We'll work as a team. Appreciate all your input. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Give me your input. Share your ideas because I learned from a lot of you guys' ideas. I've, I've made some um, design modifications based upon the input that you guys have given me because there's many of you out there that are very knowledgeable and uh, I can use that knowledge so don't think that that I don't read it and don't um, take that information that's shared and put it towards this research because I do I have all my options open because we are going to make this work so alright this is Tyson uh, FSRD Fuel Systems Research and Development you guys take care have fun more videos coming and uh, peace out